I had a request from somebody recently that I show you how to fit one of my rider's belts. So I thought I would go ahead and do that. So when you receive it, it comes and it looks like this. And it actually has three layers. The top layer, which I call the overstrap, fits in under loops on the side here and is actually attached to the rest of the belt in the middle at the back. So I can completely separate it from the rest like that and it will be possible to take it off if I undid the black velcro I could remove it completely which some people do if they want to use this belt just for sacroiliac support during their everyday life. So there's the top layer and the middle layer is this black elastic which velcros on to the main layer of the belt so as I undo this you can probably see whoops I've got our top layer with the narrow strap the elastic with velcro on and then the underneath layer so I'm going to put this on now and It goes on as low down as you can get it around your pelvis just above the bony nobble at the top of your thigh there. So I put it on like this and I put it on tight, pulling it as tight as I can. I then grab the velcro pieces, the elastic velcro pieces, pull on them to stretch the elastic and velcro them onto the main belt. So I did it up tight to begin with and now it's tighter than tight and you can see the elastic velcro bits here over the initial bit. Here's the overstrap which I can now put back through these loops and clip back to itself like this and I could if I wanted to pull this tight here so it was just around me tight and was just another layer and otherwise inoperative or I can make it longer whereupon I can demonstrate to you more about the real purpose of the belt so let's suppose I'm on a horse and I'm in a good shoulder hip heel line and in neutral spine and I have this around me first of all is like I've put my pelvis in a corset and I firmed everything up and for anybody with a slightly splodgy kind of backside, which is most women, having yourself firmed up and held as if in a corset is really useful. It stops a lot of the blubbling about and makes your body mirror more the natural quality of more talented high tone riders. If I'm going to use the overstrap, my thumbs go in it like that from the underneath. So I put my thumb in the gap between the belt and my body like that. And if I was riding, I could have hold of the reins as well, and I can adjust the length of this overstrap. If you're riding in it like this, it's best not to have a stick because it's rather a handful to have the overstrap, the reins and a stick. But I could shorten the reins appropriately and have my hand out here. And my instruction to a pupil in this situation would be that they had to keep the tension in the overstrap. So I can really make somebody aware of every time their hands come backwards or they start to fiddle and do things, because their aim is just to keep the tension in the overstrap. Now at the point when I do that, I'm doing much more than just giving myself a feedback mechanism to know that my hands are out there and still. What I'm actually doing at this point is potentially pulling on my own back. And my instruction to people is that they get to push back against the belt, pushing back into it here at the same time as they pull on it. So I'm doing that now. I'm pushing back into it at the same time as I'm pulling on it. And what you're going to find if you do this when you're riding is that you feel a lot more firm and able to still your body and stop the wiggles and jiggles. And that's going to make you just more still and more stable. So you could ride like this in walk for a while and then you could let go of the overstrap, see if you can keep the same feeling, pick it up again. And you could play with that in walk and in fact in all the gates with one hand or two hands. I'll use it for sometimes with people in rising trot. So as they rise, they get to have the effect of pulling themselves from the back of their pelvis into the rise. 
And if you do that, it's inevitable your hands are going to move a bit, which of course ultimately you don't want, but it's worth it for what you learn for doing it. And then when you let go, you're trying to keep the same feeling of pulling on your own back when you're not actually doing it. I'd only recommend using this in canter if you absolutely trust your horse and you're with an instructor in an enclosed area and you could use one hand, you could use both hands. If you use one hand, I would recommend you make it your inside hand to help you push it forward. You can pick it up, let it go and keep playing with can you find the same stable feeling. So let's talk through a little more about what this is actually doing for you. Think about a rider having a lunge lesson in sitting trot, holding onto the front of the saddle. Here she is holding onto the front of the saddle. Everything's fine till the instructor says, let go of the front of the saddle. And what happens to most people is they bump and they bump up and down. And in those up and downs, they go backwards, back to the cantle, and they may well go off to the side as well. But in my experience of all these years, I've never seen anybody bump forwards. Everybody bumps backwards. So when you were holding the front of the saddle, you were given permission to make that force. Take the force away, you bump backwards. The force you were making acted from the front towards the back. Now, when you have the reins, you're likely to use that same force from the front towards the back. You may know you're doing it. You may know not, not know what you're doing. It's called pulling. Nobody gave you permission to use that force on the reins, even though they may have given you permission to use this force on the saddle. Okay, so my understanding here is that a force is required to hold you up the front of the saddle. So let's pretend this hands the horse and the horse is going trot, 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 trot. The really good rider is going still here, still here, still here, still here, look no hands. The not so skilled rider is going not quite there on the first step, more not there on the second, more not there on the third, bouncing on the candle on the fourth. You have two choices. Either you bump backwards or you make this force from the front towards the back to stop you or you make a force within your body that acts from the back towards the front. That force keeps you with the horse, with the horse, with the horse, with the horse. Now, this is where this really comes in because as you pull on your own back here, you are adding to the force within your body that acts from the back towards the front. You're helping yourself not make a force from the front towards the back because you realize every time this goes loopy. And by pulling on your own back, you find a way of stabilizing yourself and matching the forces of the horse's movement that you possibly didn't even know existed. This belt helps everybody. It's a miracle cure for some riders. It's hugely helpful in getting riders to learn how to sit to the trot, how to match the forces. So I hope even just the idea of this, that you have the choice of the force from the front to the back or the choice from the back to the front will be of use to you. Because the bottom line is that your body has to match the forces of the horse's movement so that you can stabilize your center of gravity over his and stay with him. Good luck.